you really wild animals out there? Have you ever wondered? What makes a kangaroo jump? How does a flying possum glide? What's a dingo do that your dog doesn't? And how come everything in Australia is so darn weird? Well, the answers are all ahead, so hang on tight. It's National Geographic's Really Wild Animals. <laughs> It's wonders down under. Woo! Good day, mate. It's me, Spin. Your globe on the go, and here we are in awesome Australia. Ready for action? Yo, you with the teeth. I'm talking to you. Whoa! Oh, I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> Boy, there's no shortage of unusual creatures here. Maybe that's why they nickname Australia Oz. When you get here, you know you're definitely not in Kansas anymore. There's a land southeast of Asia Sits all by itself The things you're gonna see there You won't see anywhere else Strange by place anyhow. Every time I think about it, it just makes my head spin. Australia's way down here. It's a land down under, well, just about everything. For millions of years, it's been surrounded by water, which has kept it almost completely apart from the rest of the world. That's why Australia has creatures like no other place on Earth. Animals that are so strange, there's nothing like them anywhere else. Like these jolly jumpers. Kangaroos. Look! Up in the trees, it's a bird, it's a plane! It's a tree kangaroo. <laughs> it's a red kangaroo, able to leap 25 feet in a single bound. That's longer than a long car, uh, most cars. It's a grey kangaroo, able to grow to be six feet tall. That's almost as tall as your Uncle Sid. You remember Uncle Sid? He's the one who's always knocking his head into the chandelier. But kangaroos can also be as small as a kitty cat. This is a full-grown adult, a musky rat kangaroo. Yep, there are more than 45 different species of roos. And how, you ask? Do they get all that spring to their step? It's all in the boing. Their legs work like pogo sticks. 
Would you look at that foot power? If this rule were human, its shoes would be a size 22. How big are your feet? A size 5? <laughs> just watch that rock wallaby go. Its feet are specially padded. They just grip the ground. And a kangaroo's tail? It can be three feet long. It's perfect for balance. And here's one more creature feature. That's right, kangaroos have a built-in pocket, known as a pouch. Makes it kind of easy for mom to keep track of the baby. <laughs> Let's see now, where do you put Junior? Oh yeah, there he is. <laughs> Bet you thought you were having indigestion. <laughs> that pouch, it's just one of the things that makes the kangaroo part of a special group of animals called marsupials. Marsupial? You gotta know the word, so kids, I won't fail you. It's a kind of beast most live in Australia. Marsupial, marsupial, until the baby's older. If mama's got a pouch, she doesn't need a stroller. With the kangaroo, the little baby has a name. A baby rules a joey, that's his claim to fame. Marsupials are magic, watch them jump, it's tip-top. And what's their favorite music? Well, you guess it. Hip-hop! Keeping Joey in her pouch is one way that Mother Roo can see to it he won't get into any trouble. She won't let him out until she's sure there are no enemies around. Finally, the coast is clear. Today, though, Mum wants to teach her Joey to come when she calls. How does she do it? Well, usually when he tries to get back inside, Mum just leans forward to let him in. But this time it's no go. Until... Which means, yo, Joe! That's the Joey. Someday knowing Mum's call could save his life. And when he's hungry, Joey just helps himself to Mum's milk, just like human babies do. But when he gets older, he needs to know about real roo food. Grass. A kangaroo will eat as much as 14 pounds a day. And you're talking a whole lot of lawn mowing when you put a mob of roos together. That's what a group is called, a mob. Of course, all that eating means they've got a lot of kanga calories to work off. Male kangaroos kickbox to show who's toughest. In this corner, the up-and-coming contender, Rubber Legs Roo. And in this corner, that killer kangaroo, Jabba Joey. The winner gets to be the boss of the mob. That's what he's called, the boss. Oh, ladies and gentlemen and Joeys, it's all over. Yes, meet the heavyweight of hoppers, the boss of the mob. Every mob has its boss, but he'll have to defend his title until someday another male outkicks him. Yep, kangaroos take a real licking sometimes. Speaking of which, <laughs> no self-respecting roo believes in washcloths. Licking cools them off. And grooming is the next best thing to taking a bath. Mm, ooh, oh, I must feel good. <laughs> but the mob better not take it too easy. Dingo alert. That's a kind of wild dog. Good thing the roos are all together. More kanga eyes on the lookout. When in trouble, it's on the double. Come on, feet. Do your stuff. All right. When you move, you do it with a bounce. You got more. Yeah.
Styles of the weird and little. Today, our weird wanderings take us to a land that's a veritable playground of the weird and little. Australia! Take the mud skipper, please. Is it a frog? Is it a worm with a weight problem? No, it's just a fish who's a little confused. What, after all, is a mud skipper to do when the next puddle's a long skip away? Mm hmm. Skip some mud, of course. <laughs> right over to the nearest fiddler crab. Hello, hello. <laughs> Why dirty your fins when you can enjoy the luxury of puddle to puddle service? Here's a living limo who never gets crabby. Meet the quarrel. Her little tykes are too big to fit in her marsupial pouch. So on her back, they go. Nothing like a little quality time with the kids. <laughs> Who'd want to hop onto a fruit bat? You'd think it'd be against the law. The law of gravity, that is. Lucky thing, its claws are specially designed to latch on when it hangs, because Junior just loves hanging around. Yes, she's weird, she's little, she's a mammal who flies. What more than that could you ask of a bat? We'll be right back after a word from mammals. Do you have fur or hair on your skin? When you were a baby, did your mother feed you milk? You wouldn't think of being hatched from an egg, would you? Then you or someone you love may be a mammal. <laughs> you can try to fight it. You can try to hide it. You can step on feathers, wings, a pair of antennae, but you'll still be a mammal. Many mammals know they're mammals. Others go through life without the faintest idea. But believe it or not, all these creatures are your fellow mammals. <laughs> yes, even marsupials are, and they're darn proud of it. So join the ranks of the many mammals that are at long last daring to proclaim their mammalhood to the world. Say it loud, we're mammals and we are proud! Hold on now, that? That's a mammal? It looks more like an overgrown pincushion. And looky there, it's laid an egg. None of those other mammals lay eggs. I mean, it's got a pouch and it's not even a marsupial. What? This is just too weird for words. But not too weird for Australia. It's called a spiny anteater or echidna, and I'm not a kidding you. <laughs> it really is a mammal. All that extra armor is just for protection, especially when it comes to dodging those dingo dogs. <laughs> Ouch, ouch! Who needs a toothpick after this meal? And when all else fails, hide. Nope, you wouldn't want to go after this guy unless you're a sword swallower. But the echidna wouldn't dream of hurting you unless you try to use it as a potty seat. 
No, it's only termites and ants that live in fear of this character. Just get a load of that tongue. Yum, 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 yum. Of course, it takes a little practice for their smooth-skinned babies having a cactus for a mum. And you guessed it, just like other mammals, a baby echidna nurses on its mother's milk. But once it starts springing some pricklers of its own, out of the pouch it goes. Sorry, Spikey. Your days as a pouch potato are over. Yes, the echidna may seem strange. Yes, it's never been hugged. <laughs> but when it comes to weirdness awards, here's the all-time winner. The platypus is a mammal, just like you, but it lays eggs like a bird. It has a bill and webbed feet like a duck. It's like everything, but there's nothing like it. In fact, it has so many different parts that the first European explorers who saw it actually looked for stitches in its fur to see if somebody had sewn it together. <laughs> you may look at them and laugh, but platypuses don't care. They're too busy platypussing around for things to eat, like insects and shellfish. They don't even use their eyes or ears to search. Their bills are so sensitive, they can detect the slightest movement of the animals they hunt. Ah, to be a platypus. Imagine that a puss. Proud to be strange. Proud to be strange. You're checking me out, you know I don't really care I'm unique, take a peek at my adorable hair Here I come, there I go You got to, got to be quick to catch my weird little show You know I'm proud of my face My eyes, they kind of look surprised And what a tongue, a nose, hey, look where it goes Proud to be Not all of Australia's proud to be strange animals jump, waddle, or swim. Check out these fabulous flappers. For a lot of birds, their far out feathers are a way to attract a female. Like the rifle bird. Here comes the bride. Looking pretty sharp, handsome. Hmm. Looks like the female's really into his smooth moves. Or is she? Whoa, was it his breath? The bower bird builds a tunnel of love to lure his mate. And he fills it with his own personal collection of shells and bones. Here she comes to check out his digs and his do. Quite an excellent purple mohawk, better known as a mantle. But soft, what light through yonder bar breaks? Would she like a seashell? How about a twig or a berry? For sooth, or if she doesn't have any sooth, she can take it for free. Nay, turn not away from his beakish visage. 
Yo, Tweety, get back here! A lot of our feathered friends have a mating call. Here's one that has a whole orchestra. The lyrebird can imitate the sound of other birds, or for that matter, even a chainsaw. And if that doesn't work, there's always fancy footwork. Yeah, boogie down, big bird. Did someone say big bird? Whoa, an emu can grow to be taller than the average man. And he starts out pretty big, too. Emu eggs weigh more than a pound each. Hmm, seven, eight, nine... Make room for Daddy. For the next two months, he's going to stay put. In fact, he hardly eats or drinks all that time until the eggs hatch. Even after the little emus emerge, there's no time for amusement. He's got a lot to do taking care of the chicks all by himself, until one day they'll grow as big as their giant dad. The Mallee fowl wants to be Mr. Mom as well, but he'll have none of this sitting around stuff. To attract a female, he's going to build what amounts to one of the world's largest egg hatches, a self-heating nest that won't need a sitter. For months, the mound gets bigger and bigger. Finally, it's time for the unveiling. The female is impressed. Enough to now do her part. And that's it for Mother Mali. She's off to rest after her hard work. As for Father Fowl, well, now come six months of taking care of his pride and joy. But this self-heating nest scheme is not all it's cracked up to be. Dad has to constantly check the temperature of the mound and make adjustments to the level. Too hot, he kicks some sand off. Too cold, he adds some. Ah, too hot, too cold. The weather is so extreme around here. Where, you ask? Well, they call this the Outback. Wait a minute, out in the back of who? How do you get out back of Down Under? The Outback is sort of the backyard for all of Australia. It's a huge dry area that takes up the whole middle of the continent. I mean, it almost never rains. So anything that lives around here has got to be pretty special to survive. Just ask this guy. He looks friendly enough. Hey, want to be on really wild animals? Whoa! Does that mean no? It's, it's called the frilled lizard. But don't worry, it's, it's really harmless. He just looks scary. Whoa! And when its big show doesn't scare its enemies away, there's always the next best thing. <sighs> Climb a tree. Of course, the frilled lizard's not the only Lulu around here. To make it in the outback, you have to be pretty tough, or, you guessed it, pretty weird. We interrupt this program with an important outback news flash for all Australian water-holding frogs. Warning, the outback has suddenly been flooded for the first time in years. But don't be fooled, it's going to get dangerously dry again before you can say... Well, you can't say anything. You're, you're frogs, aren't you? Yeah. <clears throat> There's no time to swim around. There will be no mud pies. No splashing allowed. Instead, store moisture for future use by carefully following these instructions. Soak in water through your skin. Your body will get heavier as you soak it in. But this is no time to worry about gaining weight. Keep on soaking. Next, dig into the mud as deep as three feet below the surface. Then, form a sack of dead skin around your entire green, flabby body. Meantime, the ground above will dry up, but stay tight within your cozy bubble.
basically mellow out. Stay still in a completely sleep-like state, kept alive by the water you stored until the rains come once again. It may take two years, but hey, you'll be well rested. We now return you to your regularly scheduled program. To have a thick skin To keep the shape that I'm in Counting on my senses Got some good defenses Looking out for strangers Something could be dangerous I want to be ready for that sneak attack Tracks in the sand You want to call my bluff? Using my aggression Lizards can be tough You won't know that I'm around Till I shake you up and shake you down If something's there, I'll find it Even look behind it I will crawl or slide or sliver through the cracks Tracks in the sand is so tough they make your average pooch look like a pussycat. Oh, that wild Aussie dog is called Dingoes, right, gang? Oh! How's that for Dingo Lingo? Thousands of years ago, there were no Dingoes in Australia. They came with ancient travellers who brought them along as pets. But then the Dingoes got free. And now they're way wilder than any dog you're used to at home. No, nope, there's no one to feed puppy chow to these pooches. They've got to chase down their meal. Lucky thing for a whole lot of sheep, Australia's farmers have built a fence that's thousands of miles long to keep the dingoes away. But as for you other animals, you'd better watch out. You roos can outrun a single dingo, but if they all gang up, they're liable to get the jump on you. Of course, they're not such a handful when they're itty-bitty pups. Ma Dingo has herself about four or five every year. <laughs> Cutie pies, huh? Drinking lots of that mammal milk. And soon enough, they're ready to go out and take on the world. They may look sweet now, but someday these little pups are going to grow up to be something fierce. Oh, oh dear. She's a good dingo, Mum. She chews some food and spits it up so it'll be nice and soft for them. But eagles also get hungry, and today, Dingo is on the menu. Boy, you guys made it just in time. My favorite show's on. Hey, what is this? The old dog channel? Hmm. Canine News Network. Master Pooch Theatre. Let's see now. National Kangaraphic. Now that's good stuff. Wait, 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 what's this? And now another episode of Lifestyles of the Weird and Little.
speak of the devil? The Tasmanian devil, that is. He may not be a model dinner guest, but talking with your mouth full is considered proper devil etiquette. And this is one marsupial that loves to eat meat. <laughs> Indeed, this grouch with a pouch will eat just about anything it can fit in its mouth. This weird little creature is rounding up its dinner too, and it's also practicing some gymnastics. The flying possum can't actually fly, but it does have special wing-like flaps of skin, and they sure come in handy when he wants to lap some sugary tree sap. <laughs> Look out below! No doubt, there are days when it probably wishes its dinner came with free delivery. Just the kind of luxury the numbat has come to expect, thanks to the thousands of delectable termites that come its way. And what better place to call home than the very same hollow logs where its buggy meal lives? Talk about room service! But this little lapper makes the numbat look lame. Yes, the thorny devil. That's what it's called even to its face. <laughs> Especially by the hapless ants that happen along its thorny way. Now, you've seen strange coats before, like when your parents have a party. But the thorny devil needs that thorny hide to protect it should danger strike while it hunts those ants. Most of your parents' friends probably don't have that excuse. And there they are. For these saucy Aussies, with all that talent and great looks, the future is sure to be weird and a little forevermore. So now you've seen it all, right? You've seen the weird and the wonderful. But you ain't seen nothing down underful until you've met this furry fine friend. Wanted? For being recklessly cute without a permit. The koala. Be advised, suspect may try to pass itself off as a cuddly bear. The koala is no bear at all. It's a marsupial, like the kangaroo. Only way cuter. Get a hold of yourself, you little wimp. Yep, being cute is a full-time job for these critters. Like most any good marsupial, a baby koala just lounges around in his mother's pouch. In fact, there he stays for the first six months of his life. <laughs> and if that isn't spoiling him enough, when he finally does get old enough to leave the pouch, his mother lets him cling to her back all he wants. In fact, Every day, Mom treats her little darling to a ride to the tippy-top branches. All for a one-pound helping of his favorite treat, eucalyptus leaves. In fact, that's just about the only thing he eats, eucalyptus, and more eucalyptus. He smells like a cough drop. And surprise, after all that eating, Junior's gained a little weight. <laughs> So what do you think? Is it time for him to give Mum a break yet? Well, any day now. Actually, all that hanging on has prepared him for life. Hanging in the eucalyptus branches. Koalas are real pros at tree dwelling. They've got padded paws, long arms, not to mention sharp claws. And their hands are specially designed so their grip is super strong. Don't ever try to thumb wrestle a koala. And after all that munching, lounging and looking cute, koalas really get to work with a snooze. For 20 hours a day, they sleep. But before you sign up for the easy life of the koala, you should know that lately they haven't been having it so swell. The eucalyptus trees are being cut down. 
And since that's the main thing on their menu, many koalas are dying. That's why this little fella became an orphan when he was a baby. Brendan lost his koala mum. Lucky thing, he was taken in by one of the weirdest creatures Australia's got, a human being. This one is named Wendy Blanchard, and she provided the care he needed. But now, he's just about old enough to make it on his own. <laughs> right, Wendy? My role as a mother is basically over. The first time I put Brendan out in the enclosure, I introduced him to pebbles. Every day I would put him in the enclosure for short periods. After several weeks, Brendan felt comfortable enough with pebbles that I could leave him with her. This is the hard part for me, but I'm just glad he made it through. Thanks to Pebbles and Wendy, Brendan has a chance of returning to the wild where he belongs. For this little koala, things sure are looking up. You know, once you begin to understand where an animal is coming from, it doesn't seem so strange after all. Being perfectly weird begins to make perfect sense. It's true. <laughs> they seem so different from us and from each other, but Australia's creatures do have one thing in common. The magical place they call home, Australia. You know, there are lots more really wild animals all across this wonderful world of ours. So be sure to join me on our next exciting adventure. Until then, this is your pal, Spin. Spin you later. Strange new friend. With your strange ways of living. I want to run with you again.
world out there and there's one great way kids can get to see it. Every month with National Geographic World, it's a super magazine just for kids. It's filled with animals, nature, science, adventure, and fun. Plus contests, puzzles, super-sized pullouts, and stories about kids who've done something very special. You can't buy World at any store, but you can get it at home each month by sending a check for just $14.95 to National Geographic World, Department Video, MCB, P.O. Box 37357, Washington, D.C., 2013-73357.